Hello everyone. Today we're launching a brand new way to enter student agreements or contracts or what Matt, uh, Brainmaker calls programs. So I'm going to pull up one of my prospects and I'm going to convert them to a student by using this button at the top. Now you'll notice that this has changed. This is something new now. It gives you a lot more flexibility in entering your programs and it actually simplifies things a little bit. You have three different groups of options here. The first option is uh, please select how to handle the existing program. Well, this girl Madison, she's a prospect, so there really isn't a current program. So we're definitely going to use replace. But let's say that she is already an existing student and she has a current program and that current program expires in a couple of months. But I want to keep collecting on that program and then I want the new program to start when we're done with the existing one. Well, then we're going to select the second one. So the first one says this program, the one I'm entering now, replaces the current program and starts immediately. The second option is this new program does not replace the current program and it starts when the current program expires. So either way that you we want to use this, I'm going to click the first one. It replaces it. The next one is how are they going to pay? Credit card, bank draft, paid in full. Uh, here's a new option for you. They will come into the school each week or month and make a payment. That's an in-house payment. And then we are not going to track payments on this program. If you do not want Rainmaker to uh, track the payments, then you just click this last one here. Okay, I'm going to select credit card. The next option here it says uh, please, please select the duration of this program and this is something brand new. Uh, this program expires and it does not auto renew. This is an open ended, in other words a month to month or a week to week contract. Or the last one would be it's a fixed expiration date but then it auto renews month to month after this fixed expiration date. Well I'm going to go with that one for right now. Okay. So let's say that I put them on a six month program but it auto renews month to month after that. Uh, that's what that would be for. So I'm going to hit next. And so now you'll see that uh, this has changed a little bit, looks a little bit cleaner, nicer. It's a little better organized. Uh, the program type, they're going to be on my basic program. It's a brand new student. Uh, when I selected that, the numbers changed automatically. If yours are not doing that, all you got to do is go to settings and you're going to go to uh, programs, program settings right here. And you could uh, put all of your programs in there as well as all your defaults. That doesn't mean that I can't change this. I can change the numbers if I want to, but if you're constantly selling the same programs, uh, then this is a good way to do it. That way you don't have to, uh, yeah, it kind of saves you some time, okay? So if I put in Black Belt Training, which is another one of our programs, you'll see that the numbers change automatically for me. Let's go back to basic. Okay, the next thing is a staff member. I'm going to select Devin here. Uh, when does the program start? And you put in here like this, 12 01 2011 and expires. This is a six month program, so it's going to expire six 01 2012. Now let me tell you what Rainmaker does. Have you ever done where at the at the end of the year you accidentally put in 11 here? Okay, Rainmaker is going to stop you from doing that. It's going to remind you that hey, this is not a uh, the correct date, so you'll go back in later. And then also the first payment. Typically the first payment is due uh, a month after they start. So I'm going to put in here uh, 0101. 2012. That's the first payment. And you'll see an error popped up here. It needs to be in this format, month, month, day, day, slash, use a slash. If I if I do it correctly, it'll uh, go away. If I do it incorrectly, it'll pop up, let me know. And that's important. In other words, while you're entering the program, it is checking to make sure what you're entering is correct. A lot of times a student, I, I don't know if you've experienced this, but a student, we've entered the program wrong. Uh, maybe we put the wrong date in it or maybe a wrong credit card number. And uh, a month goes by and they, they don't make the payment, obviously, because there's an error. And then the second month, and now they're double billed. And uh, that can create uh, you know, a lot of tension between you and your student. Well, we want to make sure that we, uh, that we eliminate that. So there's some built-in functions to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, so let's put back in... 12 right here okay all right here's if it's a normal program I don't need to do any changing then I'll leave that there uh, how do you want to pay do you want to pay monthly do you want to pay uh, every other week or do you want to pay weekly if you choose these right here it'll ask you the first date and the second date so typically let's say someone wants to pay on the first and the 15th that's perfect all right if you want to do on the 15th and the 25th that's great but whatever this day right here the debit day it's got to be the same as the state right here the first payment date must fall in the date uh, that is in this list. So since that is the first, let's put the first here. And then uh, I'm only going to do it once a month 
one time a month, so that option goes away for me. Okay. Now in the previous string uh, screen, we selected credit card, but if I need to change it and say, "Oops, it's not," it's really a bank draft, and I can change it and hit next. And now when I go back, now it says the EFT or the bank draft or e-check, and then now it's just asking me for routing number, checking number, uh, and driver's license. I mean that you can put their driver's license in there; it doesn't affect anything. State, you know, some of you guys might want to. Uh, to store this information, uh, you can do that, but it doesn't affect anything. So if you don't have that information, don't sweat, don't worry about it. Uh, but I do want this to say credit card instead. Hit next. So now you notice it goes right back. And I did I didn't lose any of my any of the things that I put in, even though I changed it, I didn't lose anything here. Okay, so credit card, name on the credit card is uh, test tester. And the credit card number four one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen forty fifteen. Let me tell you something else. Rainmaker is actively checking that credit card number out to make sure it's a legitimate legitimate credit card number. It will warn you if it's not a legitimate credit card number. Now it won't tell you if there's any money in their bank account, but it will tell you if the credit card is wrong. So at the time of entry, you can make sure that it works right. Okay. All right. Security code. If you don't have security codes, don't worry about it. It's not necessary, but if you have it, it's great to put it in there. Billing company, if you're using Rainmaker to collect your tuition automatically, the internal word for that is Dojo Collect. No one ever sees that word except for you, the, uh, the school owner or the, the team member. Uh, the end user, the, 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 the student, never sees that word Dojo Collect, but that's just the way that we let Rainmaker know that we're going to be automatically collecting on this. Okay, I think all of this is pretty uh, self-explanatory. A word about Social Security numbers and driver's license numbers and credit cards. Once we store this information, we use military-grade encryption so that... Uh, worst case scenario, someone hacked your account, they're not going to be able to get at your credit card numbers. So that's just an added level of protection for your students. Okay. Now, in the previous screen, we selected that this one auto renews. So here we have the renewal details. When this program expires, auto renew at, and it's looking for a dollar amount. All right. So, you know, if they're paying $139 a month, then I'm going to auto renew them at 139 a month. It's going to happen monthly. It's going to happen on the first of the month. Okay. You also have two times a week and weekly. So that's in there as well. So what's going to happen now is that when this program expires in six months, on the seventh month, it's going to automatically renew a month to month at 139. Now I know some people uh, sell a program where you know if they complete their black belt training in 36 months, then they'll renew at a different rate. That's a lower rate. So you could put a lower rate. You could put anything you want in here. Whatever you're going to charge a month to month. Okay, great. This last section, and it's the final section, is the class credit section. Uh, do you track class class credits? That means uh, if they pay for a block of lessons, let's say they pay for 50 or 250 lessons, and then once their 250 lessons are done, they're expired, well, then you would want to check this. If you're not interested in tracking that, you can uncheck it or don't even worry about it because it's just going to run anyways, and if it's not important for you, uh, you can just kind of disregard this. But if you are the school that tracks class credits, then you're going to want to have that there. And Now, this has to have a number in it. So if you don't care about numbers, you can just put zero in there, okay? If you want to do the math, if they come two days a week for six months, it's about 48 classes, you can throw 48 classes in there. If they come three times a week for three years, about 450 classes, you can throw that in there, okay? Whatever you want, it doesn't matter if you're not tracking class credits. Let's hit Add Program. Okay, so now we go to the point of sale. It says right here, the program has been added to the student. Now you can enter down payment through the point of sale. I can skip this step, but I want to recommend that you don't skip it. And the reason why I want to recommend that you don't skip this is because you want to, if they put a, a, you know, a down payment, even if it's the first month, you want to have a record of that. So later on, you can go through their history, their payment history, and see if they made a down payment. Okay? So you can skip it or you can enter the down payment info. I'm going to go against this. I'm just going to skip this step for now. But I wouldn't in my school. I would definitely keep track of that. Uh, so I would click here, enter down payment if I want to use point of sale. Even if they gave me a check today, I can I can record that. Or if they if I want to charge them right now and charge their credit card, I can use point of sale. Okay? Or I can skip this step. Let me do that for now. I skip it. Now it goes on to add family members. Now if Madison has a brother or a sister that's training with them, I would put their first name in there, their last name, their birthday, uh, their gender, an email address if it's different, uh, their age group their belt, 
and their current program. They're in a basic program. And I'd hit add family members to every family member. Now, what's going to happen when I do that? Well, Madison is going to be like, let's say the contract holder, okay, or the agreement holder. And then all of her brothers and sisters or moms and dads are going to be like underneath her account. So Madison is in charge of paying for all of those guys. And this kind of just saves time for you as a school owner. You don't need to, you know, add all the, you know, all their info plus another contract info plus when they expire and all that stuff. You just need to do that to Madison and then everybody else kind of just, you know, assumes the same things. Now, it's going to be different if you have a student that starts and then later on another member of their family, then you would treat that as two, probably two different programs with two different agreements and all that stuff. But if it's just everybody starting at the same time, this is the best way. Now let's say Madison doesn't have any brothers and sisters. I don't need to add any family members. I'll just click done and it'll move to the next step. Now, if you have had uh, Rainmaker, uh, if you've had us at headquarters create a PDF document for your contract, you can actually view the contract now and you could print this out and have them sign it. If you haven't uh, had us create that for you, then you probably won't even see the screen. It probably just skips by it because it's not available, but I want to let you know that that's available. If you'd rather print it and then have them sign it, then you can do that. Right now, I'm going to hit continue. And I'm right back at Madison. You'll now notice now she's a student. You'll notice down here, here's all the different uh, things that we just added. She's going to start the basic program 12-1. It's going to expire 6-1-2012. It's 139 a month. Uh, the billing company is Dojo Collect, which means we're going to automatically collect on this using uh, Rainmaker software. There's five payments left. The next one's due on 1-12-2012. I mean, that's it, guys. Now, let's talk about Madison, and she's been with the program a few months, and she's going to uh, upgrade her membership to a higher level membership. So you look her up, and you go down, and you will see that there is a program here. It's the basic program, and um, you, what you'll do is you'll go down here to add program, and click, boom, and now it's going to go right back through this. Now, this one is going to replace or it does not replace the current basic program that she's paying on. Well, this one, in my school, I'm going to say it replaces it because I wanted her to start right now. She's going to pay the new rate right now. But if you wanted to keep her at the same rate, and then when this current program expires, she's going to jump up to the new rate, well, then you would select this one. So I'm going to select here. Uh, it's going to be credit card again. And this one is going to be a fixed expiration. It's a 36-month program for me, and it's going to auto-renew month to month. So I'm going to click Next. So, program start, uh, program type, it's going to be black belt training. Now, these are my terms, guys. You use whatever terms you want. Staff member, it's going to be Devin, and so on. And you fill it out the exact same way. And that's how you add contracts, or some people call them agreements, or Rainmaker simply calls it a program. I hope this helps you guys out.